We have two papers for today. One of them is uh, the one by Bonabo. Bonabo, like um, um, Nicholas Carr, remember that other paper, that I think the first paper that we discussed. Uh, Bonabo is also not uh, a practitioner. Uh, sorry, he is a practi practitioner in, in information system, in the information systems field, but he is not, he is not an academic, right? Most of the authors that we have discussed here um, are, are academics. Uh, uh, this guy isn't the same way as, as Nicholas. Nicholas Carr was a journalist. Uh, well, this guy, he's he, he's someone in the industry, but uh, he, he's not someone who's. Let me see. Oh, it's it's telling me that everything is going a little weird today. The connection. Is against me. It's not, Mr. Mr. Alex. I don't know what second paper you're talking about. Maybe I'm personally not aware of it. But according to the schedule, what I see here, we've got Malone paper. Yeah, Bonabo and Malone. Bonabo and Malone. Yeah, it's. Bonabo, the, I didn't see any other paper like that. Oh, you know what's happening? This, this is well. This is this is very good uh, teaching for you who are, are software are going to be uh, software engineers. It's uh, simply that it's a very poor. Uh, what, what I did here was very poor. How do I say? Very, very poor um, uh, window presentation of it. Uh, if you see right on top of Bonabo, there is another topic, right? And there is Bonabo in blue. That's a link. But anyway, uh, uh, were you able Uchi, to to read Bonabo, or you also missed it? Please? You missed. Okay, so so we're not. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll discuss a few ideas of. Can you see? Uh, uh, can you, let, let's show. Let me show you the. Yeah, please. If you can. Yeah. No, I this. I still cannot find it. You, 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 can you see this page? I can see now the Malone way. Yes. So Bonaboy is here, but I, I apologize. I've just realized that I usually do it very in a in a way that is very clear. Bonaboy is is here. This uh, this uh, first. Uh, Actually. Even for us, it's not showing. Like, this? let me share my screen. Huh? Oh. Okay. Uh, go maybe, on. Maybe for the future, I yeah. you, you consider Weird, yeah. Like, so, I'm here. So, that, that's what I see here. I see, uh, go a little up uh, on this window. Like, which? Interesting. Uh, you, you never see the page the way I show here. Uh, maybe uh, go to go to, uh, on the left. There, go to the top uh, on the the, le the left where you have, have the, um, the 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 links there. Go to uh, because you are. It's interesting. You, you don't see the whole page like the, the way I show you here. Uh, no, by like the this. Way, none of them were like that. Like even these ones. So it's like interesting the because YouTube. then it means that you don't see. For example, I have recorded all our classes. They're all up here. It's with. Uh, uh, Try see that uh, on on the top uh, left corner. Uh, just try to close that that little. Uh, just try to minimize the the let's say what is presented to the left there. That seems to be just the links, right? Yeah. Can, can you, you just you have the cursor right? Oh, it's my cursor. That can, can you see on my screen? No, uh, on my screen. Can you see where my cursor is? Uh, oh no, no, hang on. You, no, it's just a second. Let me see. No, I, I, I I'm not showing. I'm not showing. Uh, yeah. No, uh, uh, how do I explain right. that? Actually, I've noticed that because even the videos, I don't have access to them. Like, if you go back even to the value of IT, for example. Yeah, you should you should see exactly what I'm showing you on my screen in for, for all classes. It, it means that you don't. Uh, oh, this? I see this one. No, 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 but you... you... What, what, and... yeah, what, what I mean, uh, Vasim, please uh, just try and, and go to the, see, see the, the, the screen that you're showing. Uh, at the left, uh, upper, oh, upper. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see it now, but but it's not. Usually, what... I don't access it like this. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but I, uh, but it's curious because I'm not seeing you. You're sharing your screen still, and I still see the. Or maybe I have a frozen image of your shared screen. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I've been. Ah. Oh God, I've been like totally using another tab. Uh -huh. Okay, so I had to go to my course here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, so so yeah. So that way you see uh, you see the things that I yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. May, may, but 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 anyway, it's 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 good. But at least at least this way you you see what I am. So how how did you usually get to to? Uh, I don't know if Uchi was having the same uh, visualization issues that that you were. Were you Uchi? Or. 
because uh, you, I mean, my intention was that you, you saw exactly what I what I'm able to show you here. Sometimes there are there are things uh, that I have in my uh, and, and and the problem still persists here. You know, the, the, I mean, the way you, even if you I'm were seeing the same visualization as you. you, you did have the same or yes, I have. You, you have the same visualization that I'm showing you. Right. Yeah. So, so the the, the uh, I mean, probably Vasin had two problems here. Uh, first, my poor, let's say, my poor graphic organization here. This is a. Um, there is a, a. I know what is my issue actually in particular, because the link that I keep accessing for the material is the one that you shared in the invitation, like the direct link. Uh -huh. I never even clicked on my courses, so it, it already shows all of that in a specific view. That that's probably the, my my issue. Yeah, it's weird because I I expected the link that I sent you to be the link to the to, to the, the the main course, you know, to to, to the my course. But anyway, it's it's good that I know that there's there's an issue there that I have to to uh, for maybe you can just tell me. I'll, I'll share with you because I think that this is the link. That, let me just now what I'm doing here is for for students in the future. I'm trying to understand what what I'm at. And that's another. Another messing up on my part here. I should. I mean, I've been working with Moodle for so long, but sometimes I'm surprised. Was this? Uh, I just sent you in the chat a link. I believe that that's the link that I had sent you, but maybe originally. Just check if uh, if this is if this uh, where this link uh, link leads you to. Because I, I of it course leads I, me, it leads me to the right view actually, which you were showing. Uh -huh. me. Right. I'm not sure if that that was uh, what I shared with you originally. Uh, even if it was, it, it doesn't matter. Right now, it's it's a pity that uh, you were going get, getting to this through that uh, well, weird yeah, interface. That, that's actually my bad. I haven't but, been clicking on the main section. Uh, yes. But anyway, uh, uh, so you you had access to the 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 pip. It's yeah. it's weird that in that sash, uh, you know, yeah, and you know why it doesn't uh, Bonabo doesn't show there because the way I included it here it is. is Almost if it were a description of the topic that we'll be discussing today: capturing and managing knowledge in and from the value chain. Right? Uh, I have to. Th this I definitely have to choose to make it look like this. Uh, uh, as you haven't read it, uh, I'll, I'll probably go faster with uh, with Bonaboy and we'll, 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 we'll get straight into into Malone uh, um, at, at Ali afterwards. By the way, I, I find Maloney uh, this paper by Malone a very a very interesting paper because it provides us with that idea that we can build on the collective intelligence of people. He's not so concerned with uh, people in the organization or people that will work for a specific organization. He, Malone uh, uh, and his colleagues are, are more concerned with the way we can build collective intelligence anywhere, right? Uh, and and he has those building blocks that that, that he makes it an analogy with the, the genes, uh, the, he calls the genes of collective intelligence. We'll get to that. Um, what Bonabo does in his uh, um, paper um, is, uh, well, the, the, his paper is, is Decisions 2.0, and he basically points out to us that, um, uh, that, that, that when we, we as humans take decisions, we, we usually do it, we, we're, we are wired in a way that is not the best way to allow us to reach the best decision. This has been studied by many um, many researchers in the past. There is a psychologist, uh, Simon, uh, who, who used to say that we, we, we usually use the, what he calls this, a satisficing logic in our decision making, which means that we are not looking for the best alternative. We're, we're looking for an alternative that is good enough in most of the cases, right? Uh, I remember in the, the the past, uh, I even had one of these uh, guys' uh, papers for, for discussion, and I used to say that I think even the, the, the most important decisions that we take in life, uh, like, for example, choosing the person uh, to be our partner for life, right? If, if, we're, if we're to marry, we're still using the satisfying logic. Uh, first, we do not, we only have access to a sample and we're pleased with it. We do not uh, get to meet uh, all the possible partners in the, in the world. Uh, so that would already, considering that it's a, it's a very important decision in life, it's, uh, we would expect that people would explore all the alternatives, but we, we are happy to explore just a few of them and then choose among them. Uh, so there is this satisfying uh, logic there. Uh, then uh, we, we also, we, in, in our decision-making uh, process, uh, we also, um, uh, basically we, we, we check if, if a 
if, if a solution fits our problem somehow and solves it in, basically we, we take the engineering approach. Uh, the engineering approach is the, is the good enough approach, right? Engineers are not artists, for example, who will spend their whole life painting a picture uh, and uh, not even show to anyone, even at the end of, uh, of their lives, because they still think that it's not perfect, right? Engineers are not concerned uh, about perfection because perfection takes very long uh, and it may even be unreachable. Uh, artists do that because artists artists do not value the practical uh, um, goals uh, an engineer is usually looking at. We are a society of engineers, right? In the sense that uh, although we, we're not all engineers in terms of having a degree in engineering, uh, humans have developed uh, our well, the, our culture and our decision processes uh, in ways that we are always trying to feel, is this good enough? And uh, Bonambo claims that this happens, uh, and, and that had already uh, been, um, I mean, noticed by, by other authors before, that this is probably because in the past, we definitely did not have the possibility of choosing the best alternative or even looking for one of the best alternatives. We had to be fast enough in decision making uh, to give us some chance of surviving a hostile uh, environment, right? If you were uh, in the middle of the jungle, if you suddenly faced uh, a a lion or a leopard or <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, a lion would probably not be in the jungle, uh, but still, if we faced <laughs> a very wild animal, uh, our chances of surviving would be greater if we decided very quickly. Uh, many times we'll probably take the wrong decision and we'll be killed, but deciding quickly uh, gave us the only possibility of surviving. Because if we were there to analyze all the possibilities, uh, the the wild animal would, let's say, would catch us. Okay, so we have been uh, almost like if it were, uh, if if we were hardwired to take quick decisions. The best among those very quick uh, alternatives that we can we can analyze, uh, and this this has been very important for our survival as a as a race, let's say as a uh, uh, as a as a specific uh, animal. Um, but uh, but it doesn't give us uh, the best best chances of exploring uh, the possibilities we now have. We we are not not in the same hostile environment that we were in the past. In fact. Maybe we are the hostile uh, element in the in the environment these days. Humans are. Of pardon, uh, Ochi. You're right. Yeah, yeah. We we became we, we became the, the the problem for 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 nature. Not it's not nature that is a problem for us any longer. So we do have more time to take our decisions, uh, and we still do not uh, usually because because we're let's say I, I, when I say here. Uh, hardwired. It means that it's it, it's almost if it were in our DNA. I don't, I don't know if it's it, it's part of the DNA of the human being to try to react to to new situ in situations and take decisions uh, quickly. I don't know if it's hardwired or if this expression is a little too let's say too strong. But we still we we analyze alternatives uh, the same way as we did uh, a million years ago. We are. Uh, and, and, and then uh, Bonabo and, and others claim here that uh, now we, we do have uh, ways of uh, improving at least the selection of alternatives among which we can decide. The authors here focus on two main issues. Uh, uh, sorry, the, um, I'm talking the authors in the plural, but in fact Bonabo wrote this paper on his uh, own. So the author uh, claims that we can involve the crowds uh, in in providing with uh, these alternative uh, potential solutions. Right? Uh, in fact, today we're, we're going to talk about crowds uh, and think that those crowds can be just the, the crowds of the internet, which are very, maybe very easy for us to think about. Uh, all those people that are there apparently killing their time uh, on social networks or, in, or, if, or doing things uh, uh, in our electronic um, environments, uh, but it could also be the crowds of um, employees of a company or the crowds of suppliers or the crowds of clients, right? Any, any, basically what these authors are going to 
discuss about Bonabo and then Malone uh, et al. in their paper, and this is why I'm talking in the, in the plural now, is that there is, uh, there is knowledge from a lot of people that can be harnessed to solving our, specific, our own specific problems or, or problems of our society. Right? Bonabo is more interested in, in organizations. Uh, uh, Malone is, is, doesn't seem to be so concerned. Of course, he gives a lot of uh, uh, Bonabo uh, for Malone and, 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 and his colleagues there. Uh, there. They, they do give a lot of, most of their examples, in fact, are examples of, of organizations, profit enterprises. But uh, in fact, the, what, Mon, Mon, Bon, uh, what Malone is exploring in, in his paper is possibilities for mankind. For, they can be used for profit, but they can also be used for, for other uh, decision-making processes. Uh, Bonobo seems to be more a little more focused on the problems organizations uh, have, uh, although I would say that his ideas are also good for us to think of problems that do not relate necessarily only to organizations. And you know, in fact, uh, uh, many times uh, over the years, I've been thinking if I should uh, change the name of this uh, of this course here to instead of information systems and organizations to information systems and society because I do believe that uh, of course information systems still have a let's say a very strong role in organizations but um, at least I, I have been I, ha I have personally been concerned with uh, with all the the impact that our information systems have in our society in general and uh, and I would wish that my students and whoever is, is studying information systems does take into consideration in, in their decision making uh, in the future not only the ambitions and the problems of the organizations for which uh, you work but also the the problems and concerns of our society as a whole right we are uh, uh, Organizations are are important in our in our society. They are an important part of uh, human life, but uh, organizations are a means. Again, it's organizations do not relate to our final goals as human beings. Right? We 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 have conceived organizations uh, as ways of organizing our work so that we can um, we we can do it more efficiently, uh, but. Uh, Again, is what our organizations uh, is what organizations are doing uh, really what we as a society would uh, would wish? Uh, organizations are there to serve society and not the other way around. Uh, but we live in in this collapsed world in which <coughs> many times uh, what should be our goals become the means, and what should be the means become the goals. Remember, I, I keep insisting on that um, on that statement by by this American poet uh, Henry David Thoreau, who who says, uh, "Compute, uh, sorry, um, our computers are improved means to achieve unimproved ends." Right? So I do think that uh, collective intelligence is a very powerful uh, means because it involves the crowds and whenever we involve the crowds we are involving at least the interests of, of more people uh, at least supposedly uh, that that should be the case right uh, so and, and 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 let's say having the the wishes the desires the aspirations of more people turned into projects should be a good thing um, but uh, it it depends on how we engage these people we can nowadays we see gamification for example becoming a, a rule in, in, in attracting people to do things uh, that uh, probably to do things that interest someone right someone someone needs uh, people to do a special thing so that they have their, their own objectives uh, achieved uh, but gamification for example doesn't help uh, as uh, achieve or, or not necessarily achieve the goals of all of us uh, gamification May lead to the manipulation of crowds, right? Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm sort of uh, going around here, and what I want to say, uh, focusing back on on Bonabo's idea, uh, ideas, is that uh, Bonabo considers that we are we, we can get at least three major benefits uh, from from 
from involving more people in the decision making. Um, one of them is, uh, they say, we, we, we can benefit from outreach. Outreach means reaching out to more people and, and therefore generating um, more alternatives or alternatives that take into account um, issues or situations that we would not think of on our own. Right? This is probably one of the reasons why uh, organizations these days talk so much about inclusion. I think that there is well, there, there are three main reasons for 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 inclusion. Uh, some are, are uh, some are better than the others in terms of their targets. Uh, sometimes inclusion is just a matter of marketing. Uh, uh, the the decision makers see that let's say the crowd of potential customers is much larger than those that are similar to him or her, and therefore they want to include others. They, but they just include want to include other customers, not necessarily. It's not a citizenship uh, inclusion. It's more like simply a customer inclusion, right? So this is this is one, and I think this is very real. I, I think that many times this inclusion projects by by organizations or or by governments or they they do have some vested interests that are not exactly those most more noble uh, interests. Uh, Oh, it's that uh, more, more noble. No, no, no worries. It's just that I have exactly the same uh, sound on mine. I was just trying to check if it was not Pradeep trying to, to reach us. Um, uh, um, so uh, again, uh, with respect to inclusion, three three things. One, it may just be for the marketing of it, for getting more customers. Another one uh, may be um, uh, because organizations already understand that outreaching to people that are different to their to their um, traditional customers, they may get better ideas. It may be related to the other one because the goal is still, okay, if I get, I get better ideas in, in, in the sense that I get ideas that will be able, will allow me to serve these other crowds also, of course, it will be good for my, my business. So it's related. My, my, my understanding a larger crowd means that we'll probably be able to meet the expectations of larger crowds. So that's another um, uh, uh, reason for for, for inclusion uh, there, um, and uh, and then uh, there is uh, inclusion uh, in the sense of uh, simply you know getting the crowds to work for you, uh, understanding let's say the logics of, of this collective intelligence that we are discussing here today, and using it for the benefit of the organization. Okay, uh, so Bonabo talks a lot about outreach. In the sense of we reach to more people, we get uh, we, we we reduce, for example, this the at least the problem of what we call self-serving bias. Self-serving bias is uh, when I you know whenever I w whatever is available for me to take decisions or from whatever is available, I pick only what already sort of confirms my own understanding of the world. Uh, uh, I don't know how aware you are about this, but for example. Uh, when we uh, in academia that happens a lot for example when you're when you're uh, reading about a topic you want to write your let's say an, an essay or a, a paper or a, a thesis or whatever uh, and then you find an author that that you think gee this guy's ideas support the ideas that uh, that I want to express in my own uh, work and then you bring that author to become a let's say a a supporter of your ideas in terms of uh, you bring uh, him or her to your discussion uh, and and you use that author to emphasize your ideas but at the same time you do that to some authors there are other authors that you start reading and you say gee this guy's what this guy's saying is completely the opposite to what i think i don't like it i will not even finish reading it so it's almost like if you pushed uh the dust or what you consider to be the dust under the rug uh, and you kept some of the dust that you that, that you like, and you think, oh, this is I don't know, this is this is some magic powder here. That's uh, this is not dust. So, so you uh, we, we have this 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 is part of of of, of the decision making process of, of humans uh, alone is whatever emphasizes what they already believe will make their beliefs stronger, um, and whatever emphasizes uh, uh, an idea that goes against what you believe will be disregarded very quickly before it affects your, your own thinking. So this again, it's uh, understanding this. Pardon, uh, Uchi? It's called cognitive dissonance. Exactly. Uh, uh, or, or, uh, uh, if, when there is cognitive dissonance, you, you get away from, from an idea. 
but at the same time there is a some cognitive and I'm making up a term here attraction or something when someone thinks the same way you do you say yes that guy is right you I mean what you should say is yes I'm always right but we are we've been told that we shouldn't no, say that it's there, there's a lot of information bias there so confirmation bias oh confirmation uh, confirmation uh, bias confirmation bias Con conf confirmation confirmation right yeah. okay uh, I, I, I thought confirmation like conforming to something uh, no it's confirmation yeah confirmation bias is a huge problem that we have in our decision making process uh, and outreaching is one way of trying to avoid that because if we have our own confirmation biases other people will have their own and at least if they're different to ours, each one will be pushing in a different direction and we will end up, uh, let's say, each one's biases will be cancelled out by other people's biases. In fact, for collective intelligence, and, and this is actually, I, I, I love talking about this topic because it's my research interest. Uh, it's, uh, I've, I've, uh, in, in computing, I've always felt, well, at least when I was a more involved, uh, let's say, uh, I was more involved with, with computing itself. I always thought, gee, there are many things that we cannot do with computing, but we humans can do. Uh, it would be great if we just uh, made this shareable among uh, a lot of people so that each one had to do a small task, which wouldn't bother them. And then when, when they did that, that small task, we aggregated them, all those the results together, and it would be a huge thing. So uh, I, I always thought of the pyramids uh, of Egypt, for example, which we, we still consider a, an engineering miracle, thousands of years after they were built, but uh, which are probably just uh, the result of a very uh, effective um, collective intelligence process or, or collective collective work process. It was probably thousands of, I don't know if it, uh, thousands of slaves, uh, thousands or, of slaves or, or, or thousands of at least people that believed that they're, they're pharaoh, pharaohs, I don't know how you say it in English, the, the, the kings of Egypt, that, that the pharaohs uh, were were like gods, and so they, they, I don't know. I don't know if people were doing that because they were forced, or because they they believed that that was part of their mission on Earth. But the fact is that each one bringing some stones. Of, I understand that some. It, it's more complex than, than that because those stones are, are very big. But let's say if if hundreds of them, or thousands, or, or, or tens of them, were were just for many years just pushing one rock to, to a specific uh, position or whatever. At the end of uh, let's say some 30, 40, 50, 100 years, uh, 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 the, the miracle would be built, right? So it is, uh, I'd say that's probably the result of a of, uh, collective intelligence and, 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 and this property of collective intelligence that is aggregation. Instead of one of us doing, doing it all, each one does a little part and we aggregate, we put them together and then it's something big. This is something that's... Uh, of course, in the past, was not also available to to people. When we had to, to it was not even fighting the lion, but escaping the lion. Uh, we had to act fast and, and, and alone, and maybe pro possibly even against the other humans around. Right? We would probably be wishing that we could at least run faster than the others, so that the lion would be pleased to catch one of our friends instead of us. Uh, um, by, by the way, that's that's a that's a, a very cynical joke, but. Uh, but this is this joke appeared on I don't recall his name now, but it, he, he used to, he was one of the founders of Sony, Sony the the same Sony that we talked about when we were discussing the Dell project. But uh, uh, well, in his autobiography, um, uh, he wrote that uh, uh, that when when Japan after the Second World War had to uh, rethink itself as a country and and I mean developed from from scratch after being destroyed uh, after losing the war and and, and being destroyed uh, and when everyone was impressed with the way that the Japanese companies became so so big and so important in the in the world market and everything um, um, he, he, he came up with this idea that the Japanese worked in a way that when they saw uh, 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 when, when they saw a lion they very quickly uh, uh, took, took their decisions while the, 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 maybe the Americans, uh, an American would uh, start evaluating their possibilities, and, and and his decision was simply, I don't have, I don't need to run more than the lion. I just need to run 
faster than you, right? <laughs> faster to faster than the competition. So when when discussing how Sony uh, succeeded in the market, he said we just wanted to be faster than the competition. Uh, we didn't have to be uh, faster than than the lion. Um, uh, but uh, so go, go, going back here to the to the to this uh, possibilities of today today uh, technology allows us for this for, for outreach it makes it easier for us to reach to people that we would not reach without the techno the cheap technologies we have today to spread our news to spread our challenges to spread our the, our need to solve a specific problem uh, and uh, technology also allows us to aggregate the efforts of many. Again, if we think uh, about the possibilities that, 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 that were shown in um, Nambisan and Nambisan paper, the paper that we, we read for a few days ago, uh, remember that they, they, involved the, they, they were telling us about possibilities of involving customers in doing things that were important for their, their companies. They never put any customer into a situation that the customer had to, to do any extraneous uh, work, any, any work that was, uh, I mean, too much because they thought they, they had many customers and they could involve these customers in, in ways that each one of them provided them with, with one idea in a conceptualizing process in, in a very pleasant way or, or provided them with uh, or supported one, customer, one other customer or one or two other customers and not necessarily spend the whole day supporting other customers to become, let's say, Microsoft value partners or so because they, they knew that they could aggregate instead of having one customer doing uh, external uh, work, they could have dozens or hundreds or thousands of, of people, each one of them doing a little share and not even knowing, not even perceiving that what they were doing was work. They perceived that as being, you know, sometimes something they would do to be involved in a, in a community or something that they would do for, for their own pleasure and so on and so forth. So we also have this, so outreach, aggregation, uh, and then a, a third possibility of, uh, of that our technologies provide that uh, allow us to do big things based on 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 the the efforts of individuals is what they call oh, sorry what Bonabo calls self-organization self-organization means uh, our technologies of today allow for groups to form and to to organize themselves in, in a way that they can accomplish things uh, without sometimes even without a specific and definitive leadership this is maybe counterintuitive because we usually think that uh, to to achieve a, a, a goal, we have to, to have that goal very well set and we have to have uh, maybe people organizing us in ways that we achieve that. But this organization could also happen based on, a, on, on, on the possibilities of a, a self-organization of a group of people that forms because they start noticing that there are uh, common goals or whatever and, 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 and technology allows it to organize itself. Of course, we, we can think, for example, of, uh, and, and you may uh, uh, disagree with me say, when I say that uh, these groups uh, may start even without a specific leadership, but for example, some, some open software development, uh, it, it may have some leadership basically to, to tell the original goal, but then the community self-organizes itself and that goal may even change in the middle of the way because the, the guy who, who had the, the Sparkle idea, that the original idea, uh, is not alone in defining where that community is going. So it may have been the starting of the, the, the whole process, but uh, after uh, this self-organization happens, uh, the, let's say the, the effort may, may go in a different direction. So of course, uh, uh, when we say that the effort may go in a different direction, then when you look at that and say, how can organizations or regular organizations, companies benefit from from a self-organization that may go wherever it, it wants and not uh, and not follow the intents of maybe the leaders of, of the organization itself? And indeed, this is one of the problems that uh, Bonabo points out in in the in the in this scheme of uh, decision making that is now possible. He says. Uh, look, uh, one, one, one problem that we may have is a problem of uh, control. If your intention is to keep control of things, uh, you will probably find it harder to involve others because involving others also means empowering them, right? Involving others also, well, it, at first it means outreaching and outreaching means reaching to people that think differently to you. And after you reach to them, don't think that you were in complete control. The, 
the you're sharing. In fact, you're sharing power with with others, and it's a power that you will never probably be able to bring bring back in. Right? Uh, he even uses the, this expression when when you un when you unbottle the gene the genie, uh, it will never go back. You'll never be able to put it back in the, in, into the bottle, right? Uh, so people have to to be aware of that. Um, uh, Bonabot uh, uh, includes a few interesting questions in, in his paper. Again, I'm, I'm trying to click here. Oh, it seems that now it's going. Or maybe not. But anyway, first time I tried, it seemed that... You clicked on the paper itself? I clicked on the, on the, on the paper, but um, yeah, this... Uh, maybe, maybe it's not going there. And, and it doesn't open. It doesn't open to you, yeah. What what I'll do uh, later I, I, after the, the the class, I will uh, I will send. It, it may just be, be just a problem in our Moodle platform. I've since since yesterday, it's a little uh, inconsistent. In fact, uh, the this um, uh, this platform, this, this Moodle platform that I'm using, is not the official platform for my university. Uh, it's uh, the, because the official platform that we use uh, at my university here. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to bring, to accept you as as, as students. Uh, yeah. So, uh, without at least, yeah, yeah. And I, I wanted, uh, of course, uh, Ezijalek offered me the possibility of using their Moodle. But then I said, oh, can I include my whole course there? And said, can't you send us the the file? And when they asked me, can't you, can't you send us the, the the file or the files? I understood that it would be very difficult for me to set it in a way that you could see. But what I'm I'm just saying this because uh, uh, so this 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 not being the official, although it's it, it is under the, the the university, but it's it's our undercover IT department um, Moodle that we use for for exceptions, and and there's we, we don't we don't have any support, so sometimes it goes down, and one of the professors will at one stage have to go there and check what what, what what's wrong. But at least it it, it it works. But it seems that since yesterday it seems a little unstable. But anyway, I I I, I can I can send you the the paper later if we if we have uh, any issues but the, the the author poses some uh, some some interesting questions one of them is uh, he starts the paper talking about why are our brains wired to avoid complexity and not to, to embrace complexity we live in a very complex world uh, we it would be expected that we we embrace that complexity to try and and get the best solutions and of course the explanation that he gives to this is Exactly what I told you here that in the past, if we if we decided to embrace complexity, we, we, we would be dead, right? So the only way of surviving was to try and make things simple, uh, as simple as possible, so, so that we could to take fast decisions. Um, then uh, he also asks, uh, can the new uh, tools and methods uh, for tapping the crowds change how companies make their decisions? Right? And, uh, and the answer is an obvious yes. Nambisan and Nambisan have already discussed many of those possibilities. Makina in the in that paper about the real the, the uh, sorry the uh, real time marketing the 1995 paper one of the, the ones that we discussed also says uh, we definitely can can um, can use IT to set a dial to build a dialogue with our customers and and learn from that. And and by the way. Uh, uh, one thing that you should you could start reflecting now is that uh, most of the the papers that we discussed uh, in previous sessions they were all talking about already about collecting this knowledge from someone right Makina wanted to build a dialogue with customers to collect the knowledge of the customer to understand the customer better to, to so that the company could could provide better products uh, Nambisa and Nambisa uh, wanted to to connect to those crowds so that the crowds could do part of the work that uh, used to, to be done in the past by 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 the organizations uh, and therefore reducing uh, reducing their costs and increasing their value. Uh, Michael Dell in the interview with uh, with Magreta is talking about all the possibilities of collecting information from the customers. We were not so interested in the customers when we read uh, uh, the interview because that had already been explored by by Nabisan and Nabisan and by and, and by and, and, and by Makina. Uh, but also the suppliers, right? Said we connect our suppliers. We, we connect to the best horses, right? We we choose the best horses, and then we connect to them and we learn from them. We we, we also teach them. Uh, we learn from them and we teach them, 
so that we as a virtual organization can be, can become stronger right so definitely uh, there's a lot of uh, reasons why involving the crowd regardless of what crowd we're talking about right? um, and then I also ask should they involve uh, the crowds um, that is not as, as, an, as, as an easy uh, question to answer as the previous ones because it depends on how much control you want to have over the outcomes if you want to, to be in full control you definitely should not involve the crowds but then I would say you definitely should also not follow Makina's idea of building a dialogue with the crowds right because when you build a dialogue with the people you 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 raise new expectations right? Makina, Makina in fact said build a dialogue but make sure that you can keep the dialogue because the worst thing that a company can do is to start a dialogue with customers, get customers enthusiastic about providing ideas and, and then forgetting about the customers and, and say, no, I want to be in control. You have some interesting ideas, but I don't agree with them. Uh, so it's going to be my way again. So that, that's, that's the worst thing, worst thing that you can do. So should companies uh, reach out to, to the crowds uh, only if they understand that losing control is something that will, will come along uh, and if, if they don't mind it. If they want to be in control, they will be in, in control of a, let's say, a much simpler organization because it's going to be uh, still based on on uh, on that uh, on those decisions that uh, we take uh, uh, based on uh, on our let's say impulse quickly without uh, thinking of the alternatives that would be important to others. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, he has a few findings uh, on this paper that are, are interesting. For example, uh, uh, he says that in practice, tools using collective intelligence have performed better than theorists can explain. And indeed, we, 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 we do have some very interesting, um, expl uh, 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 sorry, very interesting um, examples of things that were done by crowds that we we're still trying to understand uh, from from a more theoretical perspective. There is this author uh, who wrote a a it's it's a bestseller. Uh, uh, were you going to say anything, uh, Uche? No. No. Okay. Uh, Surovieki. Let me see if I find him here to show you the book. Surovieki. I think this is the way we spell his name. Yeah, this is James Surovieki here. Uh, this guy wrote a, a very interesting book, Surovieki. I, I hate, I hate that for whatever reason, uh, when I Google here, it always gives me the results in Portuguese. Why is that? Do I have to maybe? It... Because this is your def default location. Usually, Google opens up based on your default location. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh no, I, I'm sure about that. But uh, but it, but I hate. Uh, see, uh, let, let me, uh, see, maybe if I write it already in English, his, his book is called uh, Wisdom of Crowds. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, it should read my mind and, and know. Uh, well, now now I now I get, uh, but but it still it, it knows my location and then it keeps telling me the price of the book in put in, in, in reals that is our money here. Uh, the Wisdom of Crowds. This is a very interesting book, very provoking uh, book. If you have a chance to, to read it, uh, it it's worth. Uh, and it's 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 about uh, again uh, the way crowds deal better with decision making than individuals. And by the way, I see here that in the cover of the book, let me see if I can make it larger. Uh, can you see this picture here? It's probably blurry. The picture in the it in the book. Blurry. It is blurry. But uh, you know what? The, those are. Actually, like a city, or is it like bombs? Yeah, it's, it's see if I if I ask the crowds, each one is going to say a different thing. Maybe someone will figure out what that. Yeah, maybe now it's oh, but it's it's blurry anyway. It's uh, and I think it will never focus. Uh, it's it's actually jelly beans. Oh, okay. Uh, and and why is it jelly beans? Because Surovieki, one of the examples he gives in the book, is um, a, a group of people, a large group of people, figuring out how many jelly jelly beans there are in a jar uh, and in fact I took this once to one of my undergraduates classes I took a, a jar of jelly beans and uh, I told them that whoever guessed right the number of jelly beans there would get the, the whole uh, the whole jar 
of beans. Otherwise, I'd give my daughter. My daughter at that stage, she's just this, this one who was living in Australia. She's, she's now 26, but at that stage, she was maybe five years old or so. Uh, maybe a little older than that, because I think this book by Suroviecki was uh, written in 2000 and something already. So, 2005. Yeah, so, so it was, I, I read this book in 2005. She was eight years old. Yeah, so, so she was eight, maybe eight, nine. And, uh, and so they, of course, they all got very enthusiastic. I knew that the chances, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind giving the, 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 the jar of uh, beans to them, but I thought that the chance of figuring out how many beans there were in the, in the, in the jelly bean jar would be uh, tough. And I told them one thing, that uh, if any one of them could beat the crowd, the crowd was all the students, it was a, let's say, a 30, 30 student class, if any one of them beat the crowd, they would get, I'd say, about half the, the, the beans, because I'm not big counting them one by one, right? But I'd say, I have two jars here. I'll just give you half and the other half is going to go to my, my daughter because she's already anxiously waiting for me to 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 take uh, this back to her because she she, she, she knows that I, I've, I've already promised her that this is going to be back. I, I know that you're not going to guess it right. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully some of, uh, one of you at least will beat the, will beat the crowd. And uh, what happened that year, so I had some 30 uh, students in class. Uh, in, in that, uh, that, 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 the first year that I did this, uh, no one beat the, the, the crowd, which means each one of them took a guess, and then we averaged the results. And the average of everyone in the class um, was, was better than anyone, so, which means that the crowds decide better than individuals. Uh, each one of us is biased in a different direction when we are taking our decisions. For example, probably the more, uh, if there was anyone there who was more engineering oriented, they would say, well, I, I see that this jar is this big, so I, I they, they could probably calculate the volume of the jar, sort of, and then they, they could say, well, I, I sort of know the size of a, a jelly bean, and then I, they could calculate the volume of that, and, and they would probably get to some they would definitely not be too far away in one way or the other, right? Uh, I mean, they, they would not be mistaken by more than uh, ten times for more or less, uh, or so. Someone else would be would have some other kind of uh, knowledge. Someone maybe had some uh, glass, you know, those glass balls that little kids play with. Uh, it's probably not of your time, but when, when I was a kid, uh, and, and maybe it's, of course it all also depends on regions of the world, but when I was a kid, uh, we, uh, well, the, the world was not so consumerist as, is, as it is today, so we had to figure out with what to play, and they, there, there, were, there were these marble, marble balls, uh, marble, they call, I think they call it, in English they call it marbles, uh, it's just little glass bo uh, um, balls, do you know them? No, 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 they, they were glass, they were glass, glass. But it, what we used to, there were a lot of uh, kid uh, kid games that we played with them, and it, it was just a small a small glass this big small glasses uh, glass balls, uh, and so what I'm saying is that someone who had a jar full of those balls, and they they probably could think, well, you know, I had 500 of those uh, 500 balls in, in a jar of the same size. I think that uh, one of those glass balls is probably as as big as two um, two jelly beans. So notice. One was doing an engineering calculation, the other one was going for some other sort of appro approximation. Each one of us in the world has their own information. Uh, and and we, we base our decisions in our own, the information that we have. Each one of us is biased in a, di a different direction. But considering that we are all biased in different directions, averaging the results is a good way of cancelling the biasing factors that uh, each, each person can bring to a to decision-making process. So what I said the first year, Nobody got got it, and, and, and Yasmin got the whole the, the whole uh, jelly um, um, jelly um, uh, jar jelly bean uh, jar. The next year, she was already a year older. She was probably a little already. She, she was still enthusiastic when I said I was going to play the same game again, and that she. But she was not so excited as the first time. Maybe she was a little older. But anyway, that 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 is the relevant factor there. The thing is, when I got there, someone did better than than the average. And of course, I had to give this person half the, 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 the jelly beans. And then I went there to figure out why that happened. Uh, it was a problem of um, what we call outliers. Are you familiar with this term, outlier? 
An outlier is someone who, who or, or, or it, is an, it is a statistical observation that is complete, completely out of the range of the regular expectations. So, for example, uh, if I tell you how, uh, you can see here, uh, how, how, how tall is this cup of coffee here? Take a guess. You, you know the size of my hands? Pardon? Uh, I'm not that familiar with with inches, but uh, yeah, uh, I'd say probably probably I, I'd probably guess it more like three inches or, or or ten centimeters or so. I don't know, but anyway, uh, we were not going to say uh, one one inch, right? And we're not going to say a hundred inches, right? We're we are reasonable. So I had uh, some people there, someone in the class that uh, I'm not sure sure if uh, for complete completely not understanding the question or uh, I, I think s someone just wrote a million uh, jelly beans and you know what that a million did to I mean I had 30 people of course I was thinking that every everyone was going to give a reasonable uh, guess and that to me seemed not to be reason reasonable maybe for the, the, the person it was right but still it was an outlier it was too far to one of the, the, the extremes and then when we average a million with whatever other numbers in the, the range of uh, hundreds or, or thousands at the most, that million dragged the average number to, to a much larger number, okay? And, and made the, the average number become really poor. And then, of course, uh, uh, Suroviecki and, 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 and other authors that deal with this with the, with them of crowds, and statistics does that also. Uh, he claims that some, what we have to do, we, we have to look at, the, at all the answers that we get from a crowd and then uh, maybe cancel out those that are, I don't know, uh, a few standard deviations away from, from, from the, the the typical answer, right? Uh, because they're they're probably far out. Um, so uh, this is this is. Uh, 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 I mean, I was just talking about the the the, the, the jelly bean uh, jar, saying that it does. Uh, it does work, right? It's impressive, uh, and, and it, it's impressive how close to the actual number of, of jelly beans in the jar the average becomes. Um, I, I don't, I don't recall even even how many jelly beans I had. Maybe it was in the order of hundreds, uh, but the average was close enough. Uh, so we we we. We, we, we do have a lot of experiments, we, we, and we cannot, I mean, the, 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 the theoretical explanations that we can give for, for the, the crowds to outperform the individuals is that crowds, we are all biased, crowds, uh, and, and, and then when a crowd, everyone in the crowd is going to be biased, if the crowd itself is not biased, which is some dif difficult assumption to make, but anyway, if we... If we are able to say that the crowd is not biased, then the crowd will reach a better result than the, the individuals, simply because although the individuals in the crowd are biased, their biases are going to cancel out. This is a beautiful thing about uh, collective intelligence because it, uh, uh, well, first it, it, it explains democracy, right? It, it's, it's an argument pro-democracy. You say, when we vote for, where, for whatever can candidate we think uh, to be the best, uh, we have our own biases, but when the whole population does that, and if the population is not biased, then we will get to probably the best solution, the, the, the best, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, the best uh, candidate to be elected. Uh, in recent years, this has been challenged, but, but again, I, I do believe that what happens now is that our crowds are biased, unfortunately, uh, in many situations, and, and this is something that we have to to be careful about when dealing with uh, crowds sourcing and when with, with crowds in general is that our crowds are becoming more biased than they were in the past because um, our well partially at least because our social network uh, electronic social network algorithms uh, favor that favor biases right they favor uh, people to to join with others that think alike instead of uh, of, uh, of, of bringing them closer to people that think differently and that could bring them to, a, to that situation in which outreach could make everyone smarter. Uh, so we have to be a little careful because 
what we for many years studied as being collective intelligence, based on the idea that this was a French, in fact, a French philosopher, Pierre Lévy. I don't know if you're acquainted with this, this philosopher. Um, uh, Pierre Lévy is, let's, let me write here, Pierre Lévy. I never know about the accents in English. Oh, 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 hang on, this guy here. Uh, except that, uh, well, this, this is his name, uh, Pierre Lévy. It's, again, I, I have to figure out a way of having my my Google search in, in it's probably just a matter of uh, searching the language here in tools or whatever but he's a he's a French philosopher this this is the guy um, Pierre Lévy has this beautiful in, in uh, this beautiful uh, saying in one of he, he has a book on collective intelligence but he also writes about cyber culture uh, oh, see, this this is collective intelligence here the second uh, cyber culture is also a, another important book by him and he says with respect to, to collective intelligence, everyone who, who lives in this in this planet, every human knows something that nobody else knows. Uh, which means, uh, and, and this was great, I think, uh, of this guy saying this in the 90s, he was, uh, most of his books, uh, well, collective intelligence was, was written still in the 90s. Uh, uh, th this, is, this, is, this is an older book also, uh, the, the one about what it says the, the, the name in English is not what is virtual, but anyway. Uh, oh, Pradeep is joining us. Uh, hi, Pradeep. Uh, so, yeah. but 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 what the, uh, this thing about saying uh, uh, everyone in this world knows something that others don't should provide us with that feeling that we have to include simply because. There is knowledge there that if we if we don't pay attention to what that person has to say, it's going to be missed, right? Uh, we we do have this potential, and, and, and when, when when Pierre Lévy was talking about this in the nineties, we thought the and the internet is going to be the way for us to figure out what each one knows, so everyone will raise their hands when they they, they know something, uh, and 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 then we'll get to the wisdom of uh, mankind. It, it, it seems. It seemed uh, an amazing possibility. Uh, unfortunately, what happened in, uh, after, uh, at least th this is my observation, is that we had all been oppressed for so long. I mean, uh, we, we were under the, the, let's say, the rule of the broadcast scheme of TV, radio, and, 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 and our previous technologies in which some smart, in quotation mark, uh, some smart people talked and we could only listen. So when we were given the chance of speaking uh, with the internet, for example, uh, the internet itself became a, a place uh, full of noise because everyone wanted to speak. And no, no, in, in fact, I, I still have this impression that everyone w wants to say something and nobody wants to listen. So it became a, a place where maybe it's a challenge for your generation of, of, of engineers there to figure out how are we going to solve this uh, or, or will people simply realize that what we're doing is, is not productive uh, in, in the sense that that we shouldn't say something simply because we have a mouth and now we have a microphone in front of our mouth, right? Uh, how will we deal with this so that people talk when they know what they're talking about? And this, this is very challenging because, first of all, I don't know if we know what we're talking about, right? I don't know if, if we know that we have something to say or not. Uh, uh, and so um, we... But, but, but maybe it's just a matter of uh, uh, dealing a little bit with our tools to make sure that we emphasize the knowledge or the wisdom and not the stupidity of mankind. Right? Uh, many of my colleagues uh, joke with me these days. They say, you've been studying collective intelligence for so long. Isn't it time that you start studying collective stupidity? And I say, no, that's obvious. We, that, that doesn't need to be studied. <laughs> We really, what we want to know is capture the, the, the intelligence of, 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 of the crowds and of us all building our, the pyramids of these worlds together. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's a little challenging. And, and, I, and I, I, I do believe that it has something to do with the fact that in, in, the, in the past we were so, what I mean, oppressed in the sense that we did not have any tools through which we, regular humans, could express our ideas. When we 
were given those uh, tools, we felt empowered uh, and we started providing the world with our ideas. And then we, we never realized that uh, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can hear more than we talk. Uh, we, still, we, we still have a mouth, which means we all have something to say, but we should know when to do that. Technology may help us uh, somehow. And some efforts, uh, for example, even some some uh, some business efforts have been done. For example, um, Amazon. When when you get when, when you log into Amazon and you're looking for a, a product, there will be all sorts of uh, advice from other customers, right? Telling you why that product is good or why that product is bad. Uh, and uh, some of those advices are very good advice. Uh, uh, some other advice there isn't uh, that great. And what does Amazon do? Amazon tells us, well, if you found, if, if you thought that one of the advice that you got here was important for your decision making, just start it so that we we put it on top. Uh, that could be a potential uh, solution to, let's say, to use the crowds themselves to express what is good and what is bad among all that is being said. Uh, but still, it, it still doesn't solve the problem and, and you still face their challenge for your generation. If, if we are to, to keep exploring collective intelligence, is that maybe what happens if the crowd is biased? And mainly in an environment where we stimulate biased calls, uh, uh, crowds. Uh, we'll still, let's say, will people still say that uh, the best div uh, advice is the one that was given by a specific person or they will be biased to say that something else was better simply because it is better aligned to their own uh, thinking. So notice that thing of outreach uh, is, is a promise, but it, 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 it doesn't necessarily happen the way uh, we would uh, expect and, 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 and wish it did. Mm -hmm. um, let me see what else uh, we have about this uh, paper here. I think yeah, we've already talked about outreach, aggregation, self-organization. Um, uh, what, one interesting thing is, uh, do you think that we are better as decision makers or as alternative uh, or generators of alternatives for, for decisions individually? Can you repeat? Uh, when, when we are, when we face a decision, a decision situation, are we better at generating alternatives? or selecting the best one among, among them, individually? <laughs> For me, it's both. Exactly, I mean, I mean, I, I think it, it all depends on the, 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 the problem, I would say, or the thing that we are experiencing. Uh, I would say, more, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, a lot of people would tend to go for like make it easier for them and go for something that is available already mm -hmm. that would actually come up with a new thing. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I do believe like both of them having different circumstances, like mm -hmm. it all depends. What if all of the available solutions, none of them is if basically it, helping uh -huh. our goal? If we go back to Bonabo's idea that when, when he says that we are very good at deciding quickly uh, because we were hardwired to do that, to survive, right? Uh, it probably already tells us that we're probably, uh, it, 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 I mean, if we have, if we can think of, if we, if we have a few available alternatives, we can quickly choose among them. Uh, but we're diff we, we find it harder to think about other clever uh, alternatives simply because we would need outreach for that. Uh, there are ideas that we are not able to think because we don't have the, the let's say, the experience or the, the perspective that would lead to that. So... Uh, uh, Bonabo also claims here that we, uh, it, it, uh, the, the, the crowds are definitely a, ve a very strong um, way of proposing new ideas or, or, or coming up with new ideas, coming up with new possibilities. Uh, and then uh, we can, and maybe that's good for, for companies because they can use uh, the, the, the crowds to generate new ideas and then they can quickly sort among them. Of course, it's, it's, it's not as quick to sort among uh, three alternative, uh, sorry, sorry uh, fr uh, among thirty or three thousand, three hundred or three thousand alternatives, as it is to choose among three. But if you have thirty alternatives, you can still skim and 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 and, and just find out the, the three or four that 
uh, stand out and then uh, for whatever reason and look again if you're choosing among them you start having that self-servicing bias the, the, the cognition uh, the dissonance the, uh, dissonance that uh, Uchi was talking about we, we, we start having those problems but at least you know alternatives are brought to, to, to us uh, prior uh, then uh, to, 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 to our, our decision making so they claim that uh, uh, well the decision making process involves generating solutions uh, uh, po potential solutions and then evaluating um, alternative uh, solutions but that we are um, better at evaluating alternatives than generating uh, alternatives uh, for generating alternatives needs w would require let's say to, to think out of the box and we, we, we can never think out of our own box right we, we can only think with what we have already in, in, in our minds others can others can think out of our box but it will be thinking inside their own boxes but it, from, from our perspective is thinking out of the box right um, uh, I think uh, maybe, uh, and, and then, uh, the, the, the paper also brings some of the, the potential problems with collective intelligence. One important problem is uh, what we call the risk of group thinking. Even even if if you as a let's say as as a decision maker is is agrees with the idea that you may get better decisions if, if you involve more people to think of them, um, there is a risk of group thinking, and group thinking is. Uh, Group thinking is, is problematic because group thinking involves the decision of sometimes the decision of the boss or the idea of the boss being uh, thought as being the idea of the group. You know, everyone. You know that situation where you get into a meeting uh, and uh, the boss expresses his ideas. Everyone says how clever the boss is, and then the boss ends ends the meeting having that feeling that they reached a a collective decision when in fact it was just a, a lot of people. Um, um, just reinforcing the idea of the boss for whatever reason, simply because they, they know that the boss doesn't change his mind anyway, uh, so why, why bother this uh, uh, providing different alternatives or whatever? Uh, sometimes simply because that group is already, uh, group thinking may happen from people, people that already think alike, getting together to reinforce their own biases or to reinforce the self-servicing biases that they have, to, to in increase the level of what we call belief perseverance, uh, that is uh, strengthening something that you already believe in, to strengthen their own uh, pattern obsession. They already, uh, I mean, they see something there and they believe that uh, what they saw will, will happen uh, forever. So group thinking is a bad thing. Group thinking is not thinking in group or thinking as a group. It is a group thinking as if it was an, 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 as an individual and then uh, getting to a conclusion that everyone is proud of because it was a collective uh, decision when in fact it wasn't. It was just a, 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 a decision that was not uh, thought of from different perspectives. So this, there's this re risk of group thinking. Another thing that may be a problem, or maybe not, is that uh, uh, decision making by a collective is unpredictable, right? So you lose control of the, what the decision is going to be. In fact, that's a challenge for any boss, right? When When a boss wants to be democratic about decision making and allows the team to let's come up with a decision here as a group uh, if, if, it, if it is really uh, going to be a decision by the group maybe the idea that will prevail is not necessarily the idea that the boss had it at the beginning so uh, and, and that of course also leads to a lack of control or or or, 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 or this control loosening uh, in the say in the sense that there may be even what uh, the author here calls a snowball effect in, in which someone in a meeting, for example, says something uh, and, 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 and that saying, instead of uh, generating new, uh, new ideas and new perspectives, starts a snowball in which other people react to that, re-emphasizing that, and then it's everyone uh, filling in their own uh, self-servicing biases uh, and being happy with a decision that is being, being taken by simply is, is no ball, ball in the situation. Um, another uh, potential problem here is uh, the disclosure of uh, strategic information by an organization. Of course, if you're if you're reaching to crowds and the crowds means customers or even um, I don't know any random people on the web. If you're if you're reaching to them to try and solve a problem, you're you're exposing your problems 
to a larger group of people than just your employees, right? Or uh, so that may lead to to some weak, weaknessing of, of the, the the position of the uh, of the organization. So I guess uh, these are the the. The, the main ideas in this paper. I'm sorry that it did not uh, appear to you as, as being uh, a, a reading here. I have to change the layout here so that it looks exactly like uh, the Malone paper here. But it's an interesting paper. Uh, uh, I wish when you have time you, you, you read it and maybe you can even come back to, to this, uh, um, uh, the recording here of, to, to, to see if it it makes more sense some of the things I, I know that I rambled about uh, several things. I, I'm, I, this is a topic that I'm very enthusiastic uh, about, uh, but then of course my sources are are sort of random. I, I'm talking about this, and then I talked about the Soroviak's Sur book. I, I I did not get so so let's say constrained to to, to this specific uh, paper, but I, but I do think that it's it's a, a an interesting uh, reading for you. Um, I don't know if you, maybe we could have a a, a Quick break, so just so that you get some coffee or something. I, I would suggest today, just if we can have a five-minute break, uh, and then we, we get straight into Malone uh, at Ali, because I mean we'll have to finish this. Uh, we'll have to finish the whole thing in, in an hour or so, right? But let's. I'll, I'll give you five minutes there to to have a quick snack, and we'll be back. Okay. All right. Um, okay, I was checking here. It's uh, the, the problem. I, I do think that we have a problem with the link to Bonabo's paper. But then I went to Google Scholar. I, I'll fix it here later. But I went to Google Scholar and uh, found it there, right? Just uh, uh, and uh, this, this is the this is the paper. So if if, if, if we ever have a problem with our links, uh, this is a paper that is available on, online from Google Scholar. You just have to look for Bonabo 2009, and it's the first one that we'll show there. All right, and then we have uh, as uh, our second paper, and this was the one I understand that you were able to access before, uh, the paper by um, by Malone and his colleagues at the MIT. Uh, this uh, this paper here, it, I have a, a version here, uh, which is the version you also had access to. Of course, if you look at the, the Slow Management Review um, website, the paper will will look a little different. The content is exactly the same. I know the two versions. This is called here the working paper. Usually when, when we when we refer to a working paper, uh, it is, uh, well, when 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 a, an academic is an author uh, and, uh, a, and a journal is going to publish our work, they usually become the, the owners of the, the copyright, right? Uh, and uh, what we, we can do is we can have in our web page or, or somewhere we can, we can uh, still uh, allow people to to see it without having to buy the the paper from the from the journal uh, but it, it's it's usually formatted differently we, we cannot we're not supposed to 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 use the let's say the paper as published in the journal so but the content is exactly uh, the same here and this is the one that we will be um, will be discussing so um as i told you uh i i i like uh, this paper by by malone and his colleagues because Having been studying collective intelligence for maybe about some 15 years now, um, 15 years that I, let's say that I know that what I am studying is collective intelligence. Uh, before that, I was already fascinated by the work of people like those authors that you have already read. Um, again, Makina, uh, Nambisan, Nambisan, Henderson and Venkatraman. None of them ever wrote the expression collective intelligence in their in their papers, but uh, I do believe that all of them were talking about that, right? In their in their in their papers. If we think uh, of uh, uh, well, Michael, if, even Michael Dell is is he, he built his company based on the intelligence of some suppliers that he thought that were cleverer than than himself or that, that his company, right? The, the, the good horses. Uh, we when we we, we discussed uh, Henderson. And Venkatraman's uh, papers here, uh, they were, yeah, and they were talking. Well, th this one not as much. This is the one about strategy, but uh, not as much. Unless we were talking, I mean, we could we could talk about strategizing. And when we when we are involving IT here as a, a potential um, strategy partner, we're thinking about the collective intelligence of the IT department, for example, as being brought to help. An organization uh, perform better in the market, right? So, uh, 
Okay. So in this model here, for example, all the revolutionary levels, I'd say, involve to some extent collective intelligence. It may be forcing the uh, the concept a bit, but when you're redesigning your network, for example, you're you're only able to redesign your network because you're including the the you know parts of other organizations as uh, as part of your own, right? And that, that becomes collective intelligence uh, when in this. Uh, in this uh, model here, where they propose the 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 several the three vectors that should be part of a virtual organization, one of them was the knowledge vector here, and this knowledge vector involves collecting the intelligence of the crowds. Of course, McKinnon in the real time marketing uh, paper, building the dialogue with uh, with customers, the real time marketing here, uh, building the dialogue with customers is all about collective intelligence. Nambisan and Nambisan, when they propose involving the customers as conceptualizers, designers, testers, and so on and so forth, they're all going for the collective uh, intelligence of uh, of their of, of, of the let's say of the customers and involving them in the in their projects. So when when Malone and and his colleagues uh, write this paper here in 2010, that was sort of telling me, you know, this the. Uh, these modules that comprise collective intelligence, some of them were in those other papers, uh, but these guys here uh, put it in a nice way that we know, uh, now understand if I want to, to get crowds involved in doing what, uh, in what, I, in what I, I, I intend here, I, I need to make sure that I include these, and they call these genes, right? It's almost as if they were, well, they say in the title, mapping the genome, mapping the DNA, of collective intelligence. Um, some uh, interesting uh, things here is that, uh, and and I have an, I, I'm, I'm still very old fashioned in the way I, I deal with my my comments here and remarks. I, I still have the paper on 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 the paper on paper, right? Uh, but the paper that I have on paper is the one as published in the. It's it's a photocopy, but a photocopy of the the actual journal. So it's a little more difficult for me here to find exactly where they're saying some of the things. But one, one of the things that they mention here, and, and it's interesting for us to discuss, is this uh, first uh, uh, drawing in which they say, okay, so there are several things that we can either assign to crowds or do ourselves, right? Uh, and they relate to uh, to this, uh, what, what he calls here the elements of collective intelligence or the, the building blocks of collective intelligence. And they say they refer to well, first, who's going to do the, the effort? Regardless of if we're talking about an intellectual effort, a decision, for example, or if we're talking about a muscles, uh, uh, let's say, effort, which is maybe carrying the blocks of stone to build up the pyramid, right? Who's going to, who's going to, to, to put the effort? The, the, the mind effort or the muscle effort? Um, well, how would that happen? Uh, it, it, it's very important that, that we think about how it's going to be performed because how may have a lot to do with the motivation for those who are part of the who here, right? Uh, if, if it's too difficult, basically, if it's difficult, if it's tough, uh, people may say, well, the, the cause is good. Let's say the goal is good, but the effort involved is too much. I cannot, I cannot uh, get involved. So thinking of the process is, is very important, very, very important. Uh, we have developed some very, very interesting projects involving collective intelligence where the goal was great, everyone would agree that the goal was, was an important one. And then uh, we found that we could not get the traction because involving people uh, would be difficult. It, it, they, they would be demanded to put more efforts than they would be happy to do. Right? So this, this, the how is very important for us. The why uh, 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 is, uh, is important because it relates to the incentives. Again, the how, the how is not an incentive, the how, but the, the, the how, how may prevent people from doing what we want, right? If it's too difficult. The why is the, the reasons to, to do that. Uh, uh, usually we want either to have people aligned with us in terms of they have the same goals and therefore they are happy to join forces and, 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 and bring their efforts to our own uh, project because they think that our project is, is leading to something that they, they find valuable. Um, in other cases, there is no goal alignment, but, or at least no final goal alignment, but there is a, a, some, some possible alignment in the middle of the way where, let's say, I always 
say that there is a difference between uh, collaborating and cooperating. Again, it, it may be sub, uh, subtle. Um, it may be like efficiency and effectiveness uh, that we, we need to define what we're calling one thing or the other. But let's say cooperate for me means operating together. O to operate together means that we are, we are all involved in the technical work, in the, in the, in the routine work that, that we're doing together. It doesn't mean that we're doing for the same goals. And collaboration, this is meaning for, meaning for me, of course, I, I have to agree with you on that meaning. Uh, I, I, I do know that some authors also agree with that. They try to say, well, we collaborate when we, we may be cooperate, uh, cooperating also, but we, we collaborate because we have the same goals. Uh, and we cooperate because we have the same, uh, we share the same means, for example, or we, we believe that. So uh, we see, l l l if we think about politics, yeah, go on, Basim. I'm so sorry for the topic, but just wanted to make sure the way I actually understand it. If you're going to ask me before you, you give the explanation, what is the difference between collaboration and cooperation? I would say cooperation could be, I mean, both of them working together to, to like, to serve a specific goal, mm -hmm. but different tasks when it comes to cooperation. Like we are cooperating different aspects to reach one goal. Collaboration means it's actually sharing the same task and the same goal. Is that correct? Or uh, uh, that, that's an, another possible and very interesting uh, interpretation of that. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, again, it depends on, on uh, I'm, I'm saying that here we are trying to define uh, meanings for, for words that and, and meanings that are not shared with uh, uh, a whole bunch of other people, which means that they're going to be weak in ways of uh, of being means of of conveying ideas, unless we, we we first tell people. I'm using the term collaboration, co collaborating for this and cooperating for that. Uh, I agree with you that your your understanding is also a possible one, and it's in fact a very good one, uh, uh, saying that we cooperate when we are maybe we we are coordinating right it's almost like coordinating tasks but I do part and you do other part uh, and, and, and maybe uh, when we are, when we say that we are cooperating even with the meaning that I am trying to give here that is slightly different from, from yours that means we do not have the same final goal necessarily but we are we're working together because in the at least for now the journey is the same it's almost like sharing the same uh, let's say we're going from uh, we're going from Paris to Juan, right? Uh, uh, I, uh, when we get to Juan, uh, I will go directly to saint Etienne du Houvre, uh, uh, and, uh, and you are going somewhere else, uh, which is different. So we have a problem when we get to Juan, uh, because we have different o o objectives there. But from Paris to Juan, we have the same, let's say, we, we can share our, our efforts. So let's say uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share the rides. Right? When we get there, we, we say, well, now we have to split because we have different uh, final goals or, or, or intents. So, I would like uh, to say, yeah. I would like to say cooperation is like an agreement, but collaboration is like the optimization of individual values in within the agreed thing, within the corporation. Within the corporation, you optimize everything each person can bring to the table. Yeah. Each person is Again, notice, uh, we, we, of course, we have to, to agree on, on, on our definitions to be able to think the same, uh, to, to, to be able to understand a, a situation the same. Again, what I'm saying here is that there is no, the, the, the difference between collaboration and cooperation is much fuzzier because we don't have someone like Peter Drucker, that's, uh, that, that very, let's say, uh, influential uh, thinker of the 20th century to say, look, for my research, I, I'm going to say that uh, efficiency is this and effectiveness is that. If you agree with this possibility, start using that also. And then the whole world started using his, at least the, the whole academic world and, and, and the business world started making that difference. We, I, I can say the difference between collaboration and cooperation is not well set. Uh, some authors will, will use different, and, and usually in, in academia, when we don't have a good a term that everyone agrees on, we have to very clearly state, well, we, I'll be using the term cooperation for this and collaboration for that. Uh, in, in, in my, uh, I, I'd like to, f f for us to, to, to follow on, I would say, let's think of cooperation of being something more tactical uh, and collaboration as something being more strategic in the sense that uh, cooperation will be more related to the process itself or how, how we're going to, to deal with things and collaboration will, will be more related to where we want to, to get at the end. But, but again, I find your, your perspectives 
just as good uh, and just as possible as this. So, but but uh, uh, what I'm saying is is that people may be uh, inclined to 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 participate in our project somehow, right? To put their efforts uh, towards it because they want to share the means, right? They 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 they, they want to take the same ride to to one, and, and when they get there, they split and uh, or because they share the goals. It's different things, right? Share the goals. Uh, may and, and and it's different things because depending on on on, on the the reasons, uh, we may even have to change the the process here, right? Uh, for example, when people share the goals, they're more inclined probably to work for th these authors here. Claim that we we the, the ways in which we're motivated to to do something is depends on three genes: love, glory, or money. If we share the goals, we may work for love. Now, love in this case could be, yeah, we, we value the same things. So uh, we we definitely, even even if we, even if there is, a, if we are not completely uh, agreed on the ways to get there, we know that we are all trying to get to the same place. So uh, don't worry, you don't have to pay me to do that because I'm doing that because I believe that that's the right thing to do. For example, right? love for these authors. I mean. This, cat this categorization, categorization of money, love, and glory, it, it, it is very, how could I say, uh, it's only three baskets, right? Uh, and there's a lot to be, to be put in those baskets. Uh, many other authors have different uh, incentives or, or different reasons why people would uh, work. For example, if I get here to, uh, to Nambisan and Nambisan, uh, look here at the lower part, they, they say, what is the... They're, they're only talking about a, a customer experience component, but what, what, what is it that drives the, the, the customer to participate? They claim that people do things for pragmatic reasons, for hedonic reasons, for usability, uh, or for sociability. Okay? So notice that they already have four... It's four reasons for, for customers to, to be engaged with a... In, the, in their case here, with a customer... Uh, environment, right? Uh, basically, a place where they will be working for the company uh, for free. Notice that if people are doing something uh, for for an hedonic reason, hedonic is is for happiness or whatever. This may relate to to, to love. I'm not sure if uh, if we can if if this correspondence is 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 that great, but and I, and I'm not sure if the if if the the genes that uh, Malone uh, and his colleagues provide us with are the only possibilities. They, they gave us three baskets. Nabisan and Nabisan already had four baskets. Uh, I remember that once I had one of my master students uh, searching for all different possible motivations uh, or incentives uh, uh, that could lead to, to collective intelligence. And, uh, and, and, and he was doing that in the literature. And he got up to, I think, almost 20 uh, possible motivations. I like the beauty of having just three is because it makes the model much simpler, right? Uh, if I have to to have 15 different uh, motivation uh, reasons, it, it adds complexity and, and in many times I, I can get uh, and I, I can, can assure you that I, I would take any of the motivation factors that he found in the literature. Sometimes it was just words that meant almost the same. Uh, some, sometimes they didn't mean exactly the same, but they could be put into the same basket. For example, for what uh, uh, Malone and his colleagues call love, uh, we can always ask love for what? It could be love for, for, for a cause, which means it's very uh, uh, target-oriented, so more related to, to the strategy. It could be love for the process. And then uh, we could say we, we solve that with gamification, for example. Gamification is a way of, of making sure people do, do work for us for no money, simply because they enjoy the process. They are, they're solving a problem. Let's say we, we build a puzzle, and, uh, and when they are solving the puzzle, they are, they are answering a problem that we have. The CAPTCHA, uh, for, example, for example, CAPTCHA, um, um, let's say, schemes, they, they, at the same time that they show that you're human and allow you to have access to, to some other system, they also help uh, an automated system to understand, let's say, what, what there is in a picture, right? When, uh, I'm sure that you, you, you get across the, that kind of situations as often as I do, where you have to tell 
which picture show a bridge or which, which picture show a bike or whatever, uh, those are all being used, for example, to train artificial intelligence, right? Uh, and in fact, they don't even, they, they, you don't have to get everything right to, to get access to, to whatever content you want afterwards. Sometimes, uh, well, I, I don't know exactly how the code goes, but uh, if you get most of them uh, right, you're probably also telling them, you know, here there's a situation that not even a, a human or humans find ambiguous or whatever. So, again, uh, uh, that is being used with a double intent. You're doing that because your intent, your incentive is I will have access to the next page. Uh, and, 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 but what the, you know, the developer's intention was, we never know. Okay. So we, it's, it's important to think about incentives because we are not going to get the crowds to do what we want, uh, you know, if we don't plan this very well. Uh, the Industrial Revolution has made us uh, understand that people will work for money, right? We've been working for money uh, for 300 years. Uh, if you pay me, I will do what you, well, of course, I'll do what you want if it is at least vaguely aligned with things that I believe, right? Uh, for example, uh, there would be no money in the world that will, would make me, for example, advertise cigarettes. You know, uh, well, we can never say there is no money in the world because uh, every man has uh, has his price, right? Uh, but I'd say uh, it would be very expensive to bribe me on that. Uh, and, and probably I would uh, do it uh, only if I thought, well, okay, I'll get all that money that they're they're giving me here and, and do something with it to make sure that people do not smoke. For example, it's, each one of us has, uh, and other people will say, I don't mind. I mean, people should be uh, mature enough to decide that it's not because I have a, a, because I'm a famous actor or something and I say something that they have to believe me. I'll just cash the money and, and, and don't, I'm not concerned about that. So pe different people, different incentives, we have to, to, to be very careful in uh, de developing that. And then there's the, the goal uh, uh, so the, the what, what, what is going to be done and, and, and what, what is the purpose. And again, notice how these things are all sort of related because depending on the goal, uh, I will use different incentives. I will have a different process. Remember uh, when, we, when we were discussing Nambisa and Nambisa, and, and I told you Microsoft was able to involve uh, people in doing support. And they were able to do that providing them with money, a pr pr very pragmatic, uh, not, not directly, they were not paying people directly, but they were providing them with a title, the Microsoft value partner or something that would allow them to sell the, their, their services to others. So uh, sometimes depending on if the purpose, depending on the purpose, you will try to hire people based on, depending on your goal, People will be, be involved more easily by love, money, or glory, for example. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, in, in, uh, last night when I was at the airport waiting for, for my daughter's uh, friend to arrive, I received uh, a, a WhatsApp message from this professor in Panama. And she was inviting me to give a, a, a talk right, at, at one of their events. It's going to be a virtual event, so it means I just have to spare one hour of my time. I, 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 I can do that easily for love or glory. There's a little glory there, right? Well, it's going to be an event for all the, the, the students in her university, some people from the... So uh, there's some prestige in being there. So I, I would say I'm doing that for love and glory. I'm not doing it for money. She's not, they're not paying me for that. And, and what would happen if she told me, I have... $50 to, to pay you for that. Would that help or would that go against? I mean, maybe she, if she told me I have $5,000 to, to pay for, for this one hour presentation, I would say, well, that's, that's a good paying. I, I think I'll do, I'll do it for the money. If she said, I have $50, I would say, you, you corrupted the, you know, I was happy to do that for, for love and glory, right? I will not do it for $50. Isn't it interesting if the, if, if the, uh, the, the incentives, we have to find the right incentives for the right goals. Giving a talk at a university is something that I'll do for free, or it's something that I could consider doing for a lot of money, 
but I will not do for $50 or maybe even for $500 because for $500 I'll be thinking, you know, I mean, oh, of course, earning $500 in, in an hour is not bad, but again, uh, it becomes too commercial, right? It's $5,000. I say, wow, okay, uh, that's, see, that, that, that appeals to the glory side of, well, well they're, they're thinking that I have something really special to say or whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll feel a little uh, also that uh, I'm being valued by that also. So we have to think very well about these things. Uh, and the, depending on the goal, I'll have some sort of incentive. For example, if the, the goal is, is very socially, ori socially oriented in the sense of uh, if it's something that will benefit society, probably pe people will be very happy to do it for love and glory. But think the things that we do for love and glory mean that we'll be doing that in our spare time or, in, in, you know, we, we still have to, we still live in a society where we have to work for, for part of the time, at least for money, right? Most of us will have to do that. So please, if, if I'm only doing that for love, make sure that you're not putting a lot of effort on me, right? So if she invited me to, to give a, a talk for one hour, I find it's perfect. It's fair. I'll, I'll go there and be very happy to to, to do it uh, for one hour. And, and and of course, that hour already means another couple of hours preparing, thinking about what I'm going to say and everything. So it's I'm happy to give three hours of my time for love. But if she says, I'd like to in invite you to teach a course, it's a 30-hour course. Will you do it for love? And I say, no, sorry. There it cannot be. Uh, that's not a good arrangement. Uh, it's it's too much time. I, of course, I, I have to work somewhere else, uh, so that will be competing for my time and everything. So that I'll, I'll have to do for for um, you know, the incentives have to be different. See, look, don't spoil. I, I mean, don't spoil good projects. If you have a, a if the purpose is 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 a pur if we are aligned on, on the purpose, you probably have to you don't have to pay me. And if you pay me, you have to think how you, you pay me is not to spoil it. I'll give you another example that is, doesn't doesn't relate to this paper, uh, but uh, that that's an interesting example also. Uh, I, I, I this is a paper that I never found again. I read it once and, and I, I wish I don't recall. It was a, a kindergarten in Israel, uh, and uh, they had this problem. Uh, parents uh, were expected to, to pick their kids at five o'clock in the afternoon. Some parents arrived at five fifteen. And, uh, and then uh, the teachers had to wait there until the last par parent arrived. Very, very uncommonly, someone arrived at 5.30. Uh, but it was, it was an issue because uh, someone would have to be waiting there with that kid until the parents arrived. It happened seldom, but it did happen. And, uh, and then the director of this uh, kindergarten decided, you know, I will solve this problem. I will include a fee for late pickup. If parents arrive late, they will pay, let's say, a fine. They will pay $30 for this late pickup. Do you think that that solved the problem or solved the problem? It didn't. No, what happened was that then parents, or maybe $30 is too much, but maybe it was $5 or whatever. But, but, but it depends. It was Israel. It, it, the, 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 I don't remember the, the, the number. Uh, but anyway, what happened was that after they in, Included that penalty. The penalty was perceived by the parents as not as a fine, but as a fee, so that they could arrive late. They didn't feel. The first, they felt really embarrassed because they, they knew that someone was there doing them a favor. Now it was not a favor any longer. They were paying for it, and if they were paying for it, that became the rule instead of being the exception. Right? It was not. It doesn't relate to collective intelligence, but it shows how. We have to think of, of our goals and the, the incentives because depending on, on what the goals are, the incentives have to be different ones. Uh, uh, okay. Right. And, and then, uh, well, the, 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 the paper uh, goes on uh, talking about each one of those what, who, why, why and, and how to do things. Uh, and for each one of them, uh, they have several possible um, um, uh, genes. Uh, some genes relate to to, uh, they call it their, their, their creation, uh, the genes that relates to, when we think about the, the what, uh, we can think of uh, creation or this, uh, to, to create something or to decide. Remember, uh, Bonabo already said that, that sometimes we, we use the crowds to generate alternatives. In other cases, we, we, we use the crowd to, to, to tell us about, to, to decide on those alternatives that were generated. 
I'm checking here if I find the same drawing. Uh, so here uh, we can, uh, for creation and, and, and decision, we can uh, have creation happening by a, a creation being a collection. And when it's a collection, it's independent work. Uh, if we were to use um, Vasim's definition of, uh, of, uh, of cooperation, maybe a collection would result from cooperation, right? Uh, notice how, how we, we can subtly uh, change the meaning of words and, and use them to, to, to solve our problems. Uh, but if, if, if we depend from one another, then it's see, then they call here collaboration in this case. Uh, if, and this is for the creation uh, and for the decision. Uh, if we, we, sometimes we're involved in individual decisions, other times we're involved in group decisions. Uh, Bonabo also this, this, uh, discussed uh, two possibilities of decisions by groups. For, uh, here, here they're talking about individual and, and group decisions. Uh, Bonabo mentioned distributed de decisions uh, and well, let me go back to it's, where is that? Distributed decisions and decentralized decisions. Are they the same thing? No, distributed. I have people that are in different parts but they're deciding together. Decentralized means I have people deciding on their own individually in different parts, and there's no. Pro it's two different processes. But when it's decentralized, it means that uh, I'll have several decision making uh, making process happening, and maybe later I can even aggregate those uh, and, 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 and to get to my final decision or whatever. But decisions are being taken in different parts, right? So this is uh, uh, for, for there's the creation and the decision genes, and they can be depending on if it's happening independently I'm going to use collection if it's happening dependently it, it, it's going to be collaboration and so on and so forth right? um, let me see what else we have here for the and then of course uh, they uh, they explain and give examples of uh, many of the situations uh, then they, oh they, they, they have examples here for example for the Linux uh, um, open software creation, no, uh, notice that they they have genes for the creation for the, for decisions. So for Linux, the creation, which is what what does it involve? The, the new new software modules. Who developed these new software modules? The crowds. Why they do it? They included here money, love, and glory. In the past, it was probably only love and glory, but there was a state. <laughs> there was a stage in which uh, some companies started saying, look, we will support your cause. We will support Linux. And, and definitely uh, it would be for cooperation, not for collaboration in their case. They would say, we, we do believe that uh, Linux can be a, a good platform for whatever we're doing ahead. So for now, we're working together. My my concept here of cooperation, uh, maybe. And, and when, when, when they cooperate here, it means that there were employees of companies that were being paid to develop new modules for Linux. So this is why money appears here uh, in, uh, in, in open software development. Some people working for IBM, for example, uh, or for, for some other company would be creating software. They were doing that because their company told them to do, uh, but they were doing that uh, uh, because uh, uh, that, that, was, uh, that was an important effort for them. Uh, how here they're, they're, they're calling it uh, uh, collaboration. Um, notice how sometimes it's uh, see, they're using the term collaboration a little different to, to what I would be using. And again, uh, what we have to do with these words that do not have a meaning that is absolutely the same for everyone, we have to check how is each other use uh, how is each each um, let's say author using it, and hopefully in the future as a, a field matures. Uh, or as language matures, we, we even get up to the subtleties of the different concepts that we could uh, discuss using these terms. But here, definitely, it's clashing a bit with my even with what I just told you about my my way of perceiving cooperation and, and collaboration. Okay, which is probably more correlated to the way that uh, Bonabo did in his in, in his uh, work. And then, uh, uh, well, well, but they, they also have decision making happening there. Who who decides which modules? Uh, will be included in the in the next release of a a, a Linux uh, bundle, a Linux uh, uh, how they call it? Not a package. The, the Linux uh, there's a there's a name for that. Uh, the next pun. 
much patch. Oh, no, no but, but patch is just a correction, right? But when you release a new version of it, they call it uh, the next Linux. Then it's a version. It's either patch or version. Yeah. Yeah, a patch is, is, is to fix something, right? Uh, uh, the the uh, It's not a bundle. Uh, it's there, There's a name that they use. Uh, Many the, the, the Linux community, they use it a lot for a, it's, it's a new, uh, the new, but, but it will be the new version. It doesn't matter. Notice, so what are the modules that will be there? Who decides on it? In this case, it's Linux. Well, it was at that stage, it was Linux Torvalds, uh, the, the guy who, who started the whole thing. And uh, some people that were very close to him. Those that are, let's say, the 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 managers of this project. It's a free software project. It's it's open source. Nobody, very little people are working for money. In fact, these guys aren't. They're working allegedly for love and glory. But notice that here, this doesn't happen by means of collaboration or cooperation. This is hierarchy. These guys are. They say, well, look, we're the bosses. You you just build modules. I, we will check the modules that you built and we'll say, well, this is great. We will include in the next uh, uh, version of the, the product. Of course, other modules will still be around, but people will have to upload them individually. Uh, they will not be part of the, the packaged solution that is, is provided to, to, to most users. Then they, they also have some other examples. This is uh, Wikipedia. Uh, a little more complex here that Wikipedia has for the the, for editing the existing wiki, the, 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 the topics that already exist there, there will be people that will be involved in creation and in decision. You, you can create a new version of an article, but there will be people that will be deciding uh, whether to keep a, uh, the current version or not. In this case, they say that those two things happen by the crowds. Uh, in the first one uh, here, it happens by collaboration. The second one is by consensus. Uh, and then the decision about... Uh, which articles to include, for example, uh, the creation of a new article is done by the crowds. The decision uh, of if that article remains in the in Wikipedia or should be deleted is also made pre notice preliminary pre preliminarily by the crowds. But then there is a final decision again by the administrators here. By uh, so notice different uh, um, different collective intelligence projects will rely on different uh, different genes to make sure that they happen, right? Uh, I, I, you know, when I started uh, looking, in fact, it was only after I looked at, at this paper here that I started reflecting about Nambisan and Nambisan's uh, uh, ways of involving people here and, and, in, and the purposes of the involvement of, of the people, what people were doing there, right? For the community, I started noticing the, 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 the goals define the means and define who's going to do it. Uh, and, and then I have a question about Nabisan. Nabisan, do you think that, uh, I mean, we had Ducati here involving customers to be uh, conceptualizers. We had Microsoft involving customers here to become uh, uh, product support specialists. Would it be possible for a company to get customers involved in all their value, value um, let's say activities, what do you think? I think they would be able to do this like maximum, maximum 90% towards the maximum. But at a certain point, it cannot really like be totally involving the, the people. Mm. And, or, and, I would say. And, and again, notice that uh, Microsoft was inv able to involve people in activities that, that were pragmatic, that involved money, involved, you know, a, a pragmatic, pragmatic benefits. Because Microsoft presents itself as being a company that wants to be pragmatic. They're going to tell us, I know that you're not going to fall in love with Microsoft, but we, we provide a tool that will make your, your work more efficient. So we don't want to be best friends, but let's be business partners here. So business partners, there's money involved. Ducati gets it to its customers and says, oh, there's some pragmatic uh, uh, here as well, but it's Ducati is more involved this, uh, probably they say, say to their customers, you know, we have the same passion. We all love motorcycles. We want to make the best motorcycles. You want to drive the best motorcycles. So it's, it's not about uh, money here. Or this, this is secondary. Uh, our involvement is on 
you know, on freedom, on, on you know, on, on the possibilities of, uh, you know, on, it, it's not about the bike, the product, it's, it's about our dreams or whatever. See, when the discourse is this, when, when the conversation is about dreams or where we want to go, we're much more aligned in, in, in broader concepts. Uh, Ducati would probably find it difficult to invite their customers to do support to, to become their their support specialist it, it's almost like this professor in panama inviting me to give a talk and offering me 50 bucks for it you know it would be microsoft can offer 50 bucks to to these guys and say oh you you, you earn 50 bucks from me or but but you you get a lot of money from it, it, this, this is it microsoft will offer a business uh, a money proposition ducati will kill the dream or kill the the let's say that the relationship that, that exists between the, the brand and its customers if it talks money. Money is not the issue there. See? Uh, 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 and, and I was only able to see this in this paper after I read uh, this one by 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 Mar uh, Malone and, and his colleagues. So, I uh, well, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's maybe for to, to introduce you to collective intelligence. Maybe it's, it's a little too much because they're talking about uh, several different things. But again, I, I do believe that uh, one of the greatest possibilities that we have with IT these days is to use it as a tool for cooperation, for collaboration, for for getting people to work together. But we have to think that uh, what what are the re the reasons to work together, uh, and 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 how we can motivate them to do that. And and all these things are not technical issues, not things that you will solve with. I mean, you may be able to solve them using technology because technology drives behavior. You, you, you may generate behavior that is, that is aligned, well aligned with what you want to do, right? Uh, so this is uh, where I want to come up to today. Tomorrow we'll have our, our last class and what we've been talking, all of what we've been talking up to now is proposing change in organizations, proposing new ways of organizations to work and telling you ways in which IT can make a difference in changing strategies, but also changing structures and, 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 and all of that uh, when we're proposing transformation, we have to think of the, the, the change process. Changing is not easy because it's not we changing our mind and convincing ourselves. We have to convince ourselves and we have to convince a whole organization how we do that. So tomorrow we'll see two approaches. So for tomorrow, two papers, right? Uh, Benjamin and, and Levinson and, and, and Engelbert and Gremel. Benjamin and Levinson, 1993. This I can already uh, uh, tell you that it's going to be a very, what I call a very industrial revolution approach. We, we'll explain that better tomorrow. And uh, when I had this uh, doctoral student of mine, uh, uh, you know, trying to, his, 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 his uh, thesis was not, not necessarily about technological change in the sense of uh, how we, we, we do the change, but was how people uh, used technology that they were forced to use. So companies impose technologies on them, uh, and then how do they use it when it's when they're forced? And he figured out that many of them subvert the way uh, that the company intended them to use uh, the technology if they can, if they're powerful, if they're empowered, and if they can do that. Uh, and they subvert that, but they do not subvert it in a way of sabotaging it. They subvert subvert it because they think that the way uh, the designers or the, uh, have have thought of of the system do not match what they believe to be the best uh, approach for them to, to, to carry out their work, right? So when he gets to this conclusion, I say, well, so we have to think, uh, uh, change differently for the information era uh, or for the knowledge era. We're not talking uh, about um, workers in a manufacturing plant that have very little decision that they can make on their own, right? Because this, the system is sort of automated and, and they are the humans are there simply because they were not being they, 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 they were not they, they couldn't automate them yet right but when we're talking about info, the information era um, businesses it's different because uh, most of the business and the business process is on people's minds right and and their individual development is very important so we, we either force them to work exactly the, the way the boss wants and then we kill creativity or if we want to keep them creative, we have to give them some flexibility. When we give them some flexibility in using their systems, they will adapt the systems to their own needs. Uh, and this is an interesting new approach. So um, yeah, please uh, uh, have a look at these two papers. Um, 
If you have time, if you want, you can also watch Postman's speech to college students. This is also about adoption of technology, but it's a punch on your stomach uh, for most of us. First time I, I saw this speech, I felt, oh, how can I deal with that? And now I can tell you that Postman is one of the drivers of my adoption way of thinking about technology. I always think, before I start, b before I get enthusiastic about a technology, I start thinking on one of the questions that he poses there to us. What is the problem for which this technology is a solution? We do have many technologies that solve problems that we don't have. I don't see any reasons for us to adopt it, you know, gladly without reflecting about uh, its consequences. But we, we can discuss that if we have some time tomorrow also. Okay, I think, uh, I don't know if you have any questions, any comments that you want to make. I would like to have some five minutes to prepare for, for this uh, dissertation uh, defense. So I'd like to finish it here today. I promise that tomorrow I'll be on, on, on time. Uh, and tomorrow is our regular time, right? Again, apologies for today. Uh, <laughs> there, there's no excuse except that you're talking to a messy guy who, who, who doesn't follow, follow even his own rules uh, accordingly. <laughs> Okay. But I hope that, Mr. Alex, if we can tomorrow, like at the end or at the beginning, whatever, we can just like have a talk and discussion about how the exam is going to be. Sure, 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 right sure. Now, I feel like we've absorbed a lot of interesting ideas and topics, but okay. Well, was, uh, yeah, I would say first, first, first of all, do not worry, right? You've all passed the exam already, okay? So do not worry about that. Uh, I mean, you've been here, you attended all classes, you were, all, were here all the all the time. You, I mean, I noticed that you prepared, you were interested. Uh, sometimes, of course, if your camera is, is off, I can't see exactly what's happening, but I, I see that you're, at least the dialogue is happening in the sense that uh, I may be doing most of the talk, but I know that you're, you know, you sort, you may not agree with me, but you, but it, I'm trying to make you, you think. Uh, uh, and that's what I will, will try to do with the exam as well. But we'll, we, we can talk a little more. I, I sent the exam to, to Isijalak yesterday. I think, I, I don't recall, I think I, I proposed, uh, eight or 10 broad questions. I asked you to choose four of them to answer. Uh, some of them are more specific about, basically choose among, choose choose four papers of this to, to discuss in more detail or the ideas of, of, of four papers of this to discuss more in more detail, but I'm not even uh, concerned about, uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in, in, in you interconnecting ideas. It doesn't matter. I don't want you to remember the names of, of, of authors. Of course, it's going to show there, well, I have this question about this paper, but even if you, if you answer it with, with uh, things that we discussed, about another paper, that, that is also good, because what I want is your understanding of this. You will have a week to, I mean, I've been recording all the, the classes. If you want to watch over, feel free. If you want to reread something, feel free. But, uh, but it's, 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 it's very, uh, I understand that it's, the, the important thing is that if, if you read before and then we have this discussion, you're well prepared for it. Okay, I have to get there in three minutes. So right. see you tomorrow. Bye.